Hello everyone, Mice here. Welcome to the first part of the human character tutorial series. In this part, we'll be making the body for our neutral character. As we've seen in the overview video, there's not much to say for the intro except for a few things. Make sure you have the add-on loop tools installed. If you don't have it, head up to edit and preferences, then to the tab called add-ons and write loop tools. Then click on the square to activate it, and it's all done. So, let's start modeling. So now that we are in Blender, the first thing we're going to do is delete the light and camera objects as we do not need them right now. And no, we're not deleting the default cube. In fact, we're going to be using it to model the body. There are many ways of modeling a body, but in my opinion, the best way to start is with a cube. This way we can easily change how many polygons we want our mesh to have. Now, I'll leave in the description of this video the blend file of this exact scene. Why you may ask? Because this scene has references of bodies, heads and many other things that we'll be using to model. References are king when it comes to modeling something based on real life, in this case a human body. We need to know how the body looks like so we can model it. Though for this occasion we'll be using some drawings that I handpicked to have somewhat of the exact proportions of the real life counterpart, but also some small stylized bits. Now that we have everything in order, we can finally start modeling. First, we're gonna make sure our cube's pivot and object is directly in the belly button of the reference. This part is very near to where the center of gravity for a human is and it's also the best area for our cube to be right now. So now we're gonna enter into edit mode and we're gonna modify the position of the upper face of the cube so it matches to where the shoulder of our reference is. We're gonna do the same for the lower face of the cube and we're gonna put it to where our lower pelvis would be. Now that we have the mesh taking up our body space, we're going to start to add some horizontal edge loops so we can make the shape of the body. I'll be starting with the front view. This process is quite important and it's something we'll apply not only to the body but to the legs, arms and other things as well. This way the cube takes up the general shape of the reference. And now onto the side view, we're just going to be modifying the already added edge loops to the general shape once again. Now that is looking more like a body, isn't it? But it's still too blocky. This is the part where we're going to start adding some more edge loops, but this time to the overall mesh. So add a vertical edge loop on the front side. And we're going to make sure that we're adding three edge loops instead of one in the front. So increment the edge loop while on this mode. And on the side, we'll add two more edge loops. And with that done, let's start smoothing out the shape of our body. For this, we'll use a really handy option called Smooth Vertices. This is an option exclusive to the vertices mode. So for this occasion, I want to smooth out these parts of the mesh because I want them to be more round. So I'll select their edge loop, change to vertices mode, and then left click, and this menu should appear. Down over here, there's an option called smooth vertices. We're gonna click it. And there it is. Our vertices have been smoothed out. <laughs> now, you'll notice a little window appears over here. This can help us smooth vertices even more and we're going to be making use of this, so I'll put the value to right over here. And done. This little option in my opinion is perhaps the most important one when it comes to poly modeling. It has saved me countless times when I needed to smooth out some specific vertices. Now it's just a matter of doing this same process on the rest of the edge loops we have. And in case we need more detail, we can add some more edge loops, but for this occasion, I'm just going to be working out with these ones that I already added. Now you'll notice this bar is not smoothing out. That's because I forgot to use the symmetry option. 
but it doesn't matter because we'll delete this half part of the body and we're gonna be adding a mirror modifier so we can only focus on this area right here okay there's our body now you can see how it looks more like a body with its round mesh and overall softness to it However, we still need to model the legs and arms, so in this case, we're going to start out with the legs. To create the legs, we're going to make use of the already existing edge loops we have. In fact, we're going to be taking down these faces down here and deleting them. But first, I'm going to add a vertical edge loop right here to have something for the lower pelvis to stand by. And then we can delete those parts. Before we start adding some geometry here, I want to talk about something very important that's going to be present throughout our entire series, and that's the poly count. I'm sure you've seen videos where people create a model and they use a subdivision modifier, which basically adds more polygons and smooths out the mesh. And this is quite useful on many occasions, but it doesn't allow the modeler to have control over its poly count. So in this series, we're not going to be using this modifier in all instances. Rather, we're going to be smoothing out some parts ourselves so that we can learn to do this as good or even better than a subdivision modifier. As a disclaimer, I'm not saying that this modifier is useless or that it's better for us to smooth things manually. Think of this as an exercise for you to envision the right poly count for the models as sometimes relying too much on this modifier can lead us to overlook things like the topology or how many polygons we want our geometry to have. So for this case, the legs and arms are gonna have 12 vertices. This range is a nice medium between 8 and 16 vertices, so it doesn't look too blocky and also we're not wasting polygons on unnecessary geometry. With all that said, we can start out with the legs. Now, we can see here that if we select this entire loop, you will see that it has this amount of vertices. And what we want right now is to have 12 vertices. So we're gonna be adding some more edge loops in this area that need it the most. When creating the legs, we want more vertices to be in the outer area of the leg. That area would be this one since this is the part that usually takes up more detail in models. However, we don't want to ignore the inner part of the leg, so we'll add some edge loops here to have some degree of control. All right, now we have 12 vertices. And before we move on, let's smooth out these edge loops that we added as they run to the body. And we want them looking good before making the leg. And there we go. Next step is extruding these edge loops. So we'll select all of them, extrude them, and we're gonna put them to where our ankle would be. Now this looks weird. It's taken on the shape of the upper part of the leg and we don't want that. So I'm gonna make this all the same height. I'm gonna press S and then C or Z and finally zero. This will scale it down to the same height. We also want to modify this loop to a specific type of shape, and that is a circle. And since we already have this selected, we're gonna utilize loop tools to make this edge loop a circle. So left click to open this menu, loop tools and circle. And there it is. Now we're gonna rotate it a bit, so it's more adjusted to where the knee would be. All right, we have a leg already. 
Though it's a terrible looking one at that. Next order of business is to start adding more edge loops. Same like we did with the body. We're gonna add more edge loops in areas we know will require some geometry to the form. So for example, the knees are gonna have three edge loops. So you'll notice here that the knee is having the same problem that the feet had and that the scale is not regular. So I'm gonna use the same trick that I did there. So I'm gonna press S, then set, and finally zero. I'm also gonna add three edge loops right off the bat. So having this already selected, I'm just gonna use the Boolean tool. So I'm gonna press B and I'm gonna increment this to, uh, I'll have three edge loops. So there it goes. And we're gonna add edge loops up here. I'm thinking about adding four edge loops, which will suffice for now. And here with the four edge loops that I have, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the knee and I'm gonna scale them down. So the height is on the same position. Same at the bottom. All right, now we can start modifying these loops to take on the shape of the leg. Let's start in the front. All right, now that's looking better, but we still need to do the same for the side view. So let's do that. Now that's looking fine, isn't it? It's looking more like an actual body with each change. So to end this video, we'll do one last part and that's the arms. The arms are basically the same process as we did in the leg. Just in this case, we gotta add some more loops around this area as so the arm can be extruded. So let's remember that we specifically said that we're gonna have 12 vertices in our edge loops for the legs and the arms. So let's add some more edge loops in this upper area. All right, 12 vertices. Now I'm gonna select this loop, use loop tools and make it a circle. And in combination with that, I'm gonna use the smooth vertices tool. Now it's smoothed out and it still has some of the circle shape instead of the square one. And now we extrude. The process is basically the same. Put the circle right to where the hand would be. And let's add some more edge loops to where the elbow would be. Remember, three edge loops in this area. Okay, now we're just gonna add some more edge loops in the arm and the forearm. So we can define those areas. Again, we start with the front view. And then we move on to the side view.
Okay, there it is. Our basic body is pretty much finished. We've still got to make the hands and feet as well as modify the existing body to make it more neutral. So don't worry about the looks that will change in the later video. In each part, I'll leave a download link of that current blend file that we're going to be working on. So you can have that as a backup. Also, if you're having any trouble and you need some kind of help, leave a comment on this video or if it's something more specific and you need some serious help, you can always join my Discord and hit me up on this channel so I can help you with anything that you have a problem related to the tutorial or 3D modeling in general. So yeah, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.